Alright, hello everybody and welcome back to Phantom Weather Channel. Happy first day of summer and I hope you guys are ready for it because it is coming in hot. We got a lot to talk about in today's video with severe storms anticipated over the course of the next couple of days from the Midwest over to the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast along with an intense ongoing heat wave and of course that Southwest monsoon. We're going to be touching on all of that in today's video. As always, if you guys do find this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on. Also, be sure to drop a like on the video if you guys want other people to get this information as well. First and foremost, let's talk about the severe weather. And we're going to be starting off with the severe weather expected later this afternoon through the evening from Kansas all the way up into northern Michigan. In this dark green shaded region, we have a marginal risk of severe weather, meaning isolated severe storms will be possible. The tornado risk is pretty much zero today. We don't expect any tornadic activity whatsoever. But it is possible that we could get a couple storms here and there that do produce large hail and damaging winds. So let's take a look at what these storms could look like. We're using our high resolution rapid refresh model, or as I like to call it, the HRRR model. And we're speeding this up to 7 p.m. Central Time here. What we're looking at is our dew point picture. The higher dew points that we have, the richer dew points that we have, indicates a more moist air mass. And that moist air is going to be key for these thunderstorms to develop. Usually higher values... Uh, in the 60s and 70s are going to be really favorable for thunderstorms and we do have that across the Mississippi Valley uh, into the Great Lakes here and this is going to help storms get going. Another thing that we're going to be looking at is high instability as well. CAPE stands for convective potential energy. The more of it that we have, generally the more energy there is in the air and the more instability there is for thunderstorms to get going. There's a lot of that present so it's going to be unstable. It's going to feel very muggy outside and that will help to get some thunderstorms going from the central plains all the way up into upper Michigan here, they're going to be very, very separated in most areas, especially the further north that you go, but there will be a few storms here and there. Uh, likely, it's going to be primarily this evening uh, into the early overnight hours. Now, we are going to have a little bit of shear in place as well. The higher bulk shear that we have indicates more uh, wind shear in the atmosphere for storm organization. When the storms can get more organized, they can often mature and become much more severe a lot quicker. But we don't have a ton of that in place. There is some pretty strong wind shear, especially across the Kansas-Nebraska border into Iowa. Most of that is displaced from where the storms are located, though. So these storms are going to heavily rely on instability to get going and to overcome the cap inversion that we have in place. But we still have a lot of storms ongoing. We're going to take this every couple of hours. They will gradually fizzle out as we get later on to the evening, likely due to a lack of instability. But we could still see some storms in northern lower Michigan by midnight, along with ongoing storms across the central plains through the overnight hours. There is the possibility of maybe getting some isolated flash flooding out of these storms later today from Kansas all the way up into southern Wisconsin with a marginal risk of excessive rainfall in place. And as you can see, a good quarter to a half of an inch of rainfall is likely from Kansas all the way up into southern Wisconsin, but there could be concentrated totals of over an inch across eastern Kansas into northwest Missouri, which is also where the highest likelihood is for thunderstorm development later on today. Now, that was the risk of severe weather for today, but it's going to be a little bit more widespread tomorrow, especially across the mid-Atlantic, where we have a slight risk of severe weather in place, which is on a scale of 1 to 5, that's a 2 out of 5. Still nothing too significant expected tomorrow, but definitely looking like a more substantial day than today will be. And there actually is the possibility of maybe seeing an isolated tornado or two tomorrow, especially across the slight risk area from central New York into northern Virginia here. But that's a very low chance. Large hail is also possible, again, on the low end of things. But damaging winds is the primary concern. Scattered damaging winds is the primary worry for tomorrow from these slow-moving, southeast-moving thunderstorms. So again, we're using the high resolution rapid refresh model, and we are speeding this up to the 3 p.m. Eastern time hour tomorrow. We're going to have widespread dew points that are going to be well into the 60s, even getting into the 70s as you get into southern portions of Indiana and Ohio here. So again, it's going to be moist out there. It's going to be muggy out there, and that is only acting as fuel for these thunderstorms. It's also, again, going to be very unstable with Cape values getting over 2,000, over 3,000, nearing 4,000 in some areas here. That's indicating a very unstable air mass in place what we don't have is a lot of wind shear so that might be a limiting factor for tomorrow's event 
You are going to have increasing shear coming out of the northwest as you get later on to the afternoon, but it's not a lot. These storms are going to be slow moving. They're going to dump a lot of rainfall onto locations pretty quickly. They'll be ongoing for a long time, but with the instability that we have in place, that might be enough to get these storms pretty severe, especially across Pennsylvania and surrounding states. So we're taking this every couple of hours. Here's the situation. Uh, as we get probably towards about 7 p.m. tomorrow evening, we're going to have widespread storms all the way from the Ohio Valley, but especially as you get further northward uh, into Pennsylvania and into upstate New York here. These widespread storms will likely contain damaging winds with them, but we can't rule out a couple instances of large hail or maybe even, again, a tornado or two, potentially. As we get later on to the evening and into the overnight hours, closer to the midnight hour, though, tomorrow night, these storms are going to be substantially weakening, and they're pretty much just going to be moderate to heavy rain showers at this point, but because they will be widespread and fairly slow moving as they move off to the southeast, they do have the potential to drop some flash flooding along with them. There's actually a heightened risk of flash flooding tomorrow in the slight risk region from northern Virginia into central New York, uh, where the flash flooding threat is going to be a bit more concentrated. You could see a good half of an inch to an inch plus of rainfall across that area. And you'll notice here from northern New Jersey into upstate New York, you could be looking at over an inch of rainfall over the course of the next 20 24 hours, maybe even a couple spots over two inches. Uh, and this is because we're going to see a little bit of rainfall uh, either today or into tonight as well. So if you add those totals on top of that, you're getting over an inch of rain over the course of the next 48 hours. That's a lot of rain in the Northeast, including areas like New York City. So that's it for the severe weather over the course of the next couple of days. Let's talk about that ongoing heat wave. So at the moment, we have some heat advisories that have been issued from northeastern Kansas into upper Michigan, which is kind of right where that severe weather threat is anticipated later on today, and also all of lower Michigan into northern Indiana and northwest Ohio as well. It's going to be very hot out there. When you add the air temperatures combined with the humidity, it's only going to feel hotter than it actually is, and that leaves some heat index values around 100 degrees. You're also looking at some flood watches across New Mexico into west Texas as the monsoon is in full stretch. So let's talk about these max temperatures expected today and look at this. We got temperatures here in the upper 90s to near 100 degrees or more. Very common across Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Illinois, all of those surrounding states here up into the upper Great Lakes. Temperatures in the 90s to near 100 degrees are going to be very common. And keep in mind, too, that these are only the air temperatures. This isn't combined with the humidity as well. This isn't combined with the UV index, which is probably going to be brutal in some spots. So it's going to feel very hot out there, dangerously hot in some areas. You definitely want to make sure that you're staying uh, in an air-conditioned room. If you don't have an air conditioner, you want to get in a spot that's as cool as possible, and you definitely want to drink plenty of fluids. Stay out of the sun if you can, but if you have to work, again, make sure to keep plenty of fluids on you. Bring some cold water with you. The course of the next several days are going to be very hot. Here's the situation for Friday. We could have high temperatures over 100 degrees easily across the central and south plains with still temperatures in the 90s up into the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley. This just continues to be the case up until we get towards the end of the weekend. And by Sunday, you will notice a cooling trend across the central and northern plains into the Rockies here. A couple days of slight relief might be on the way. So here's your 6 to 10 day temperature outlook from the Climate Prediction Center, which is this Sunday through next Thursday. From a climatological standpoint, it's going to be below average from that time period where the monsoon is ongoing in the southwest up through the central plains and into the upper midwest. So you might get a slight twinge of relief from the norm where it could be slightly below average in those areas, but it's still going to be well above average in the deep south and also the western tier of the United States as well. And then as we get towards Tuesday through Monday of the following week, through Monday, July 4th, or of the 4th of July, I should say, uh, it's going to be pretty much gone. It's going to be back to above average temperatures for the majority of the country, especially for the southern tier of the United States. But there's something interesting going on. So again, Sunday through Thursday of next week, we're going to have very, very above average precipitation across the desert southwest here. This is because of that ongoing monsoon. There is going to be chances of flash flooding down there, and that's, of course, never a good sign. But it is going to be relieving the drought conditions in those areas, at least to some degree. Uh, but what will be going on is across the Midwest into the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes, we're going to have below average precipitation, and that remains the case uh, through likely at least the 4th of July. 
from Arkansas all the way up into the east side of the Great Lakes. So it's going to be dry over there. It's going to be very hot over there as well. The opposite goes from the desert southwest. So we kind of have a turntable sort of situation uh, to kick off summer. But that is going to wrap it up for today's video. If you guys did enjoy it and you want to see more of them, be sure to subscribe to Phantom Weather Channel. Also, be sure to drop a like on the video if you guys want other people to get this information as well. But until the next video, stay safe out there, and I'll talk to you guys back here next time.